What's going on everyone? My name is Sherwin and today we are in the R1T studios. Today we are headed to the Rivian Service Center. This is the post delivery service. Now I've taken delivery of this truck March 27th and today is May 7th. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty big gap between delivery day and service appointment day. And actually it was a lot worse or a lot longer. Uh, the original appointment date was like the week before Memorial Day weekend. So uh, almost two months uh, waiting for this uh, day to, to get my issues fixed. And uh, I've mentioned a couple already in previous videos, but uh, we can go over it again. The first thing that I found was the uh, right side, the passenger side uh, latch for the spare tire. Uh, it's not uh, locking, so it's always open. At least that side is open. Now, it doesn't really uh, get in the way of things, um, but it's something I do want to get fixed. The next thing I noticed was the passenger door. The front passenger door, it was making a, uh, a different sound. And I, I got to look for the, the clip. If I could find it, I'll, I'll post it on this video. But it was sounding a little different. But now it's, it's sounding normal again. Um, but I do want to have it on their record just so that they are aware of that issue. And I did send them a video clip of the the the, uh, the sound was different so it could be a seal thing or an alignment thing i'm not really sure uh the third thing i want them to check out is the uh, rear passenger door like window trim it was uh coming loose the adhesive is uh wearing off so i want them to like reapply adhesive or change out the entire uh trim and the fourth thing is, uh, I think my alignment's off. It's leaning to the right a little bit. So we're gonna have them check it out. Uh, they wanna do a test drive. And I'm like, don't you all have machines to measure the uh, alignment on that? Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not a mechanic. Um, but okay, we'll, we'll go for a test drive, I guess. Now, uh, afterwards, I found some other things also that I want them to take a look at. And uh, one of them is the, the roof um, rails where the roof rack mounts on. The, the trim there is kind of loose. So I don't know if that's uh, within spec. I don't know. Um, but I just want them to check it out. Um, the next thing is... I'm going to ask about the screws uh, when I was installing the mud flaps. If you haven't checked out that video, please check it out. But the screws are like the sharp ones. And if they come loose, it, it could be pretty bad for either my own tires or the, the car behind me. If they run it over, it's going to puncture. So I don't know if that's a common type of screw because on the Tesla, when I was installing uh, the mud flaps there, they're just clips and um, those plastic uh, fasteners. They're not really screws. So I'm gonna have them double check that. Uh, the other thing too is the alignment of the panels underneath where the hitch is. Uh, it may have uh, misaligned when I was unscrewing things and putting on the mud flaps or they may already been misaligned. Uh, I want them to also take a look at that. Um, I will be comparing uh, the service appointment experience uh, between Rivian and Tesla because I've done so many of them with Tesla already. Uh, and I want to see, I want to see uh, how different the luxurious Tesla brand, luxurious as many people claim it to be, I want to compare right off the bat they they've pretty much um i'm not going to use the word guaranteed because it's a bit strong but they've already uh sent out like enterprise uh documentation just in case i have to use enterprise 
The initial option is to use their existing fleet, R1S or R1T, and their secondary option, if they don't have any available, is to use Enterprise. Now, they're gonna try to give me an EV, uh, and as close of a size as possible to the car that I'm leaving them, but I don't really mind if it's a smaller car, because if it's a gas car, I don't want, an, I don't want a, a gas truck or a gas SUV. Um, and also, I don't think, if it is an EV, I really doubt that they're gonna uh, reimburse me for charging or anything. So I'm just assuming uh, what, what's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost a guarantee that they're gonna give me a loaner um, and then maybe they'll fall back to rideshare services. But they didn't really mention that as we were going through um, the paperwork and stuff. So we're going to see what, uh, what kind of loaner I'm going to get. It looks like the estimated uh, time that they'll complete it is one day. So I have to pick it up tomorrow probably. Uh, but we shall see what kind of uh, repairs or how long it's going to take for them to, to do them. All right, I have arrived here and I don't know where I'm supposed to go, but there are a line of vehicles here. So I'm just going to get behind it. Um, and the parking lot is fairly full. Uh, I guess that's where I'll be. All right, so they told me to just park here in the back, but there was a line over there and I don't know if that's new trucks that they've delivered from a truck or I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I brought my card because I don't know if like with Tesla you can or they can control the cars through their computers and stuff. So I'm not sure if they have that ability here. So I just brought my extra key card just in case they can't unlock and drive using their own computer systems. But we're going to go and check in and see uh, what happens today. I hope they can give me an R1S as a loaner. Okay, so they went ahead and did a test drive. They feel it uh, banking on the right, leaning on the right. There is a, an alignment issue. So check this out. From what they told me, Rivian has a alignment warranty of one year or 12,000 miles. 12,000. So it's covered under warranty and they're going to take care of it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just not used to this. I'm not used to this. Um, but they don't have any uh, fleet vehicles for loaners. Uh, I was told that they only have three and they usually have five uh, service appointments a day. So um, they've contacted Enterprise. Uh, they're on their way here. Uh, I'm not sure if they're bringing a car here for me to just take or if I'm going to have to go to their office and pick one. Um, hopefully they have an electric vehicle. If not, I will take a hybrid. Um, I don't know the situation about fueling or recharging, um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll continue on with this journey. All right, y'all. So we are in the Leaf Studios. Uh, they gave me a Nissan Leaf, a uh, white exterior with black interior. Uh, I'm not sure what year it is. Um, I think it's the SL trim. Uh, I'll find out all the details about this car and put it up on the screen. But uh, I could have gotten a Model 3, but I was chatting with one of the service advisors and they gave it to uh, a different person, which is fine. I actually, at first I was like, oh darn, I should have gotten the Model 3 because um, I'm already familiar with it. But then I realized, you know what? Uh, let's see what else they got uh, on the lot. So they actually have a parking area uh, in the Rivian um, location, and that's where they park their um, rental vehicles. So they didn't have to uh, take me to their location. But um, the other EV they had was a, uh, a Nissan Leaf. Uh, honestly, I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. I think this is a great EV if you're coming from gas. Um, the interface isn't really all that, but uh, there is USB-C and USB-A. Uh, 
connections and as soon as I plugged in my iPhone, see this is where uh, CarPlay comes in handy. Um, so CarPlay uh, like turned on and immediately I knew how to uh, um, work my way around the interface. And I got my uh, navigation going as well because I'm not really familiar with that part of the town. And um, yeah, they gave it to me at 75% state of charge and i think it had like 175 miles of range uh it's pretty quiet so far but i'm gonna uh reserve my opinion on this uh, after spending a day with this car but so far it's been really good it did take some time to figure out how to reset the trip meter but i've already driven a few miles um, but i wanted to calculate uh, the efficiency and how well this thing uh, will hold uh, it does have the Chatamo uh, charging port as well as the J1772 um, and and the charging is off my own pocket I gotta pay so unlike Tesla with their loaners um, the supercharging is included uh, but with with the range on here and I have the adapter for um, my home charger to J1772 I could charge at home and not have to uh, spend any money I don't believe this has a large battery, but again, I'll post all of the information on the screen. All right, we are back in the R1T studios. And the only reason why I went back to the service center was because uh, I thought I, the, the truck wasn't going to be ready. They gave me a call yesterday. It is now Thursday. I dropped it off Tuesday and they called yesterday telling me that um, they may need to keep it another day and it's been a challenge uh, trying to charge the Nissan Leaf and I don't have the adapter so I've been charging at an EVgo uh, with the Chatamo uh, plug because EVgo has Chatamo and C CCS and so the Nissan Leaf has uh, Chatamo or J1772 the chargers near my house only have Chatamo and uh, CCS and it's been a, a, a challenge and um, just check out that video once I put it up of the Nissan Leaf. It's a very interesting car. It's it's a nice little commuter car, but there's some there's some stuff to it. But yeah, check out that video. But I wanted to go and stop by and grab my adapter because if I was going to keep the Nissan Leaf for another day or so, I didn't want to keep going to the EVgo and charging. I'd rather have my adapter. I have an adapter from A to Z uh, that lets me use my Tesla home charger to J1772. And as I went to go pick up the adapter, uh, it's done. They said that they just finished it. And pretty much uh, the alignment is what they corrected the trim is another thing they corrected but the the weird thing is the uh storage for the uh spare tire wasn't broken after all i don't know so i don't know there was any adjustments that they made but when they showed it to me it was closing and in previous videos you saw me stand on it right you saw me like standing on it and trying to close it and it wasn't closing so they said they didn't do anything I don't know, but uh, I still have that one year, 12,000 mile warranty that they don't know what it's called. They, they don't tell me what it's called, but apparently there's a one year, 12,000 warranty on some things. Um, but OK, so they don't charge. I'm at 43 percent state of charge with 155 miles. I was hoping that they would have charged it. Maybe maybe they would have had I not shown up trying to get my adapter. Uh, but I, I don't know. Um, this should be enough to make a round trip uh, to work. If not, there is like a, a, a slow um, charge point charger like next door. There's a park next to uh, my work. So maybe I'll plug it in there for a few hours. I think it's like 20, 25 cents uh, per kilowatt hour just, just to give it some extra extra miles on there. But yeah. So I didn't really need to charge. I had enough to run errands and go home. The, the charging station by my work, the, someone cut, the, cut the, uh, the charging cable for copper. So, man, 
Uh, but the range estimator in the truck is is really good. It's it's like fairly accurate. I think it's even more accurate than my Tesla, but yeah. So let's go over the invoice. Okay, so going over the invoice, the invoice looks similar to uh, Tesla's invoice, but the first concern, customer states the outer belt trim is coming off by the window on the rear right door. Um, so cause breakage on the right rear doors, belt line seal, cladding. I don't even know what the what cladding means but okay uh, but pretty much they removed and they replaced issue number two uh, customer states spare tire compartment does not latch on the right side so this one's interesting open and close the spare tire lid multiple times both latches engage lock when using two hand wide grip to close the lid firmly uh, so there's no trouble found and um, when I picked up the truck they they showed me the proper way um, to close it so two-hand method and 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 it closes like there's no issue um, but in the videos that I've shown I was like stepping on it and so I guess you have to be more gentle um, I have closed it a couple of times after the service uh, I'm still trying to get used to it it's not latching a uh, close on the first attempt but eventually I, I kind of figure out how to close it um, so I guess I just have to get used to it. So no, no issues there originally is just user error. <laughs> uh, next issue is this, uh, customer states not uh, notice vehicle pulling to the right customer requests to check alignment noticed right after taking delivery. Uh, it is out of alignment. They did check it alignment four wheel check, adjust test drive 10 minutes. So they did align. There was an alignment issue. Um, from what I've gathered, it just came out of the factory that way. They don't really do that much alignment, if they even do alignment out of the factory. So there are things that I like with Rivian service more than I like with Tesla. And then there are things that I like with Tesla that I like more than the Rivian experience. So I'm going to go over some things and compare the two. Um, so with Rivian, I can get a hold of someone a lot quicker, an actual human being, um, whether it's over the phone, uh, using the app, and I can text or message them, um, you know, or email. Uh, with Tesla, you have to create a ticket just just to get a hold of someone. I've mentioned this in the in the previous video, and I really hope Tesla does look into that and just have somewhat of an not really an open communication but just an easier way to to contact service now the next thing i like with rivian um it seems like a loaner is guaranteed because immediately after uh the email was sent when the service appointment was coming up um, they sent me an enterprise loan agreement. Now, I don't know if they foreseen that there won't be a Rivian fleet loaner vehicle available. Um, and they're just trying to prepare, prepare and, um, just get all the documents ready. I, I don't know if that was the case, but I did end up getting enterprise. Um, so it may sound weird because many of you have been getting loaners, but in the many times that I've gone to Tesla service because of uh, the beloved Model X, both Model Xs, it's only recent that I have been getting loaners. Uh, previously, they've been handing out um, Uber credits. And yeah, okay, it's it's great that they're giving it to me, but it's, it's like, I need to go to work. I'm not going to take Uber to go to work, you know? So... I guess once that service center got more established, uh, they've gotten more uh, fleet vehicles to provide. So it's only recent, I think the last maybe three or four uh, times I've been to service with Tesla that they've provided loaner vehicle. And it may sound all great in that, all that, but if you've checked my videos, the conditions of these loaner vehicles are are horrendous it's dirty it's not the data is not wiped out um, I can see activities that the previous person who who loaned the vehicle um, I, I know where they went and it's kind of a privacy issue and 
it's it's that dealership, that service center. It's it's always been like that. Um, I mean, luckily, I'm not like a a bad person or whatever that could you know mess mess with all that uh, information. But it's kind of like, well, now that I've handed off the loaner back to you, do you guys wipe it? Do you clean the data? Do you clean the car? Um, so again, your experience with the Tesla service at your service department may differ from mine, but it's, um, I mean, man, I'm really giving Tesla a huge pass on all this stuff. Um, but it, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way. So loaners from Tesla that I've gotten recently, actually <laughs> all of them, it's been dirty. The, the data, if, if there's data, uh, staying in the car because sometimes you don't get the the memory card for uh, sentry mode and all that but when you do they don't delete it they don't delete it they don't factory reset none of that stuff so i have to go in and remove the previous person um, and then before i return it i have to go above and beyond like you know bef just removing my data and and it's just the condition of the car is it's really dirty I didn't want to spend too much time on this, but I do want to just share with you all like, man, it could happen uh, with Tesla. But with Rivian, at least in the service center that I, I go to, they said that they only have like three fleet vehicles available uh, for uh, loaners. And they usually see about five uh, customers per day. So there's hardly any loaners available, but they fall back to Enterprise. And Enterprise, I've been, I've had great experiences with enterprise not even related to uh, loaner vehicles or anything but just renting their cars i've used them in the past the cars are clean it smells nice um they have pretty good selection so tesla did used to use enterprise uh, many years ago uh, and i've used them with tesla and and the same same experience the enterprise has been great so it's it's good that um, Rivian falls back to enterprise and I've seen on the forums uh, that if they don't have any fleet vehicle they'll fall back to enterprise and if they don't have any enterprise vehicles then they'll fall back to uber credits so they have uh, multi layers of just plan a plan b plan c type thing backup plans um, so that's what I like with Rivian. Now, I could be wrong again with other Tesla service centers where they have clean loaner cars and they have more loaner cars readily available. Um, as far as Tesla having loaner vehicles, I think it has improved a lot, unlike the experience I've had about a year ago, almost a year ago. Also with Tesla, with their loaners, you do get free supercharging. Uh, with Rivian, I don't know. I didn't get a Rivian, but with Enterprise, from what the rep told me when they gave me the Nissan Leaf, because it's an EV, they gave it to me at 75% state of charge. But he said, because it's an EV, you don't have to bring it back at the same state of charge. You could be low or close to zero or whatever. Um, they're not going to charge me on it. Now, I don't know if that's a policy with Enterprise, like company wide, or if that's an agreement with Rivian themselves. But I think I returned the car with like 80 something percent uh, state of charge. So I'm just being a good neighbor. Uh, but yeah, no, no, no free like fuel or anything like that um, with Enterprise. And I'm not sure with Rivian. Comparing the Rivian app and the Tesla app regarding like service history and stuff, the Rivian app isn't all that great. Um, there were some files I wanted to get access to, like for instance, for this video, I wanted to um, get a copy of the file for the, the doors being like, it just sounded weird when closing, um, but it, it actually fixed itself. But I wanted to share that with you um, I didn't keep a copy, but I, I sent it to them through the app and it's no longer there. And I have messaged them about it and they said they'll get back to me. And at the time of recording this part of the video, I haven't heard back from them. So I, I don't have access to those files that I've sent. Um, the service history on the Tesla app, I think, is a little bit better. 
uh, because uh, everything's there. Everything's there from the photos uh, to, to the videos and things. So you have access to all of that. And I think it's just, um, you could navigate around uh, a little bit better. So overall, if you were to compare both, I mean, in my opinion, nothing is perfect. There's pros and cons to both Rivian and Tesla service experience that I've gone through. Uh, when I had my Acura TL, that service uh, experience, man, that was like, that was great. Uh, Acura is considered a luxury brand and it shows every time I go get my uh, Acura serviced, it shows the, the person that's there, the service advisor, like pretty much knows me. And, and when I go to Tesla, they know me, uh, but not, not because like uh, that's part of their protocol or whatever. Um, but it's because of the number of times that I've gone there with the issues with the Model X. That's why they know me. Um, because it, had I not go there a lot, I don't think they're going to remember me. And which is fine. Which is fine. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the type of attention, I'm not going to say the level or the amount of attention, but the, the kind of attention that I got when I had my Acura, it just seems like it, it was more personable. Um, like it's, it's just like the, the advisor knew me and I, I always went to the same advisor. Um, and it, it didn't feel like when I had, uh, uh, Hondas and Toyotas where it's like you're a cattle just going through, uh, like a conveyor belt and they don't care. And it's, 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 I'm not expecting Hondas and Toyotas to be like that, but with Acura, it, it was, it was just another level. Um, I somewhat kind of expected Tesla to be that way, not because I consider them to be a luxury brand like many people think that, but it's like the amount, the cost of the car you would think would come with the, the level of service. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I just have high expectations. I mean, the cars that we've owned with Tesla aren't aren't that cheap i mean we have a model x uh you know close to a hundred thousand and then uh our my model y performance when i bought it was like seventy thousand. so am i expecting a bit too much i i i don't know i don't know uh i mean th this truck is in the 80s so my acura at that time 2004 i think i paid like forty one thousand dollars but but the service i got i don't know maybe it's inflation i i i don't know because back then forty thousand for a car was it, it's a lot it's it's up there already so maybe i i don't know i don't know but i just wanted to share with you all the the service experience like from acura can't be touched if i were to compare it with my experience uh with tesla uh, Rivian, I'm going to give this one a, a bit of a pass because it is my first time. So hopefully it, I'm not going to see them too often, but yeah. One thing I do want to share is bring one of your key cards or your carabiner because at, at the time that I went to service, uh, they don't have the ability. Rivian does not have the ability to start the car or gain access to the car through your computers. Uh, with Tesla service, uh, they can remotely access your car. They can drive it. There is a an agreement you have to like agree to an agreement you have to agree to um, to allow them to do that. Uh, but you don't have to leave your keys or anything with Tesla. They can control the entire car when the, it is in their possession. Uh, but Rivian, make sure you bring an extra key for them to leave, whether it's the carabiner or one of your key cards. Being it's the first time I've had experience with Rivian service, it's okay. Now, have you had bad experiences with Rivian service? Have you had good experience with Rivian service? What about Tesla for those who own Tesla and have experience with their service center? Have you experienced uh, anything good, anything bad, similar experience? I I'm really a bit disappointed and maybe it's not the people, but more of the policies, maybe. I, I'm not really sure. I, Because the people at the te Tesla Service Center, they're great. Don't get me wrong. They're awesome people. But I just don't know why I'm not 
I'm not getting as good of a service as what I've seen people uh, share online. And, and it's not like a one-off thing. It's just every time I go, it's always dirty loaners, damaged loaners. Sometimes there is no loaner. Um, so hopefully they can address that. I, I, I don't know. But I mean, Rivian using enterprise, like I, that's great. Tesla used to do it. I don't know what happened with the partnership, but yeah, hopefully they can go back to that. But again, I don't think it's an, uh, an issue anymore with Tesla because uh, their fleet, the number of fleet vehicles that they have now has increased. So I don't think loaners would be an issue uh, moving forward. Do you think it's going to get worse with all these layoffs with Tesla? I don't know. I mean, Rivian lost people as well. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Once again, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.